Every angler has a favorite time of the year to chase fish with a fly. Whether it be during the blossoming spring, during the green of summer, the colors of autumn, or during the cleansing white of winter. It merely offers a backdrop to a pursuit that has attached itself to the soul of a fly fisherman. Rod, reel, fly, and fish. Oh, there's a big fish. Oh, big fish. There we go. Big fish. <laughs> Under that log, behind that rock, or deep in the dark blue could lie the fish of a lifetime. It's in that helpless hope that the angler will march from year to year through a lifetime, hoping the next cast connects dreams and a fish of legend. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. Wow, big fish. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. I'm Greg Heister. The Atlantic salmon, one of the most prized pursuits in the sport of fly fishing. But over the past decades, its population has been decimated and its habitat's been destroyed. But here, they still swim strong and they swim free. And with the help of a couple of close friends, we'll try and get this rookie his first Atlantic salmon. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Seasons on the Fly and welcome to Iceland's Laxa River. Got him. Fish. Nope, maybe. Got him. Good. Joe Roof, an American. Klaus Freemore, a Dane. <laughs> a convergence of European tradition and a grizzled trout fisherman on an island in the middle of the North Atlantic. In geological terms, a rock that is youthful, but with a tradition that is wrapped in wool and tweed. I have guys here in Iceland that I've guided in other rivers. They come here and they act absolutely differently completely differently. They calm down. Normally they're like lean, mean fishing machines. They come here and they, ah, we'll have breakfast late. You know, everything calms down. It's so nice and quiet here. Everybody says Iceland is uh, magical. I think, I think especially this part of the country is. Is that a grills? Yep. I don't care, it's beautiful. <laughs> Perhaps there is no more storied fish in the annals of fly fishing than the Atlantic salmon. The history that includes gaudy flies, two-handed rods, and a fish that comes to a fly as well as any swimming in fresh water. Is there any sea bass on there? Yeah. Let's see on the back. So how's a guy from uh, Denmark end up in Iceland? <laughs> uh, I came up here fishing and, I mean, the, the country is so spectacular and the fishing is fantastic. So I decided, I, I had an offer of coming up in the following summer to guide and it's either going to be waiters or suits, so I chose the waiters. I think that was good. Way to go, Jose. Okay. Oh, thanks. Iceland, roughly 40,000 square miles, about the size of the state of Kentucky, is on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a boundary on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, and it's part of the longest mountain range in the world. Reykjavik is the country's largest city, Two-thirds of the country's 320,000 residents call it home. We're on the northern edge of the island, just outside of a town called Akare. All right. Am I doing good enough to catch a fish, Cloud? Yep. Okay. Am I impressing you at all? Yep. Uh, no. <laughs> the river is called Laksa Aladal. Laksa means salmon river, and there are many in Iceland. Aladal is the name of the main valley given by the farmers here. But what makes this river so unique in Iceland is the size of the fish here. Well, this river has got the highest average weight in Iceland. There's a lot of 20 pounders caught. Uh, in the old, earlier days, it was 30 pounders were common. Um, they're coming back again, but uh, I mean, the average size in this river is much, much higher. I think the first 100 fish on this beat had an average weight of about 17 pounds. So that's what makes this river special. And it's big. Ooh, shrimp, shrimp, shrimp. 
Now why didn't he take the fly? Fish. Skating. Oh, fish! Ooh. There he was. This was easy. I mean, it was really, really easy compared to some of the other environments where I've caught fish, where you've got ripping the wind and you've, you're throwing bigger profile patterns. These are smaller profile patterns. Right in front of that ripple, I caught the biggest fish I've caught in this river. Oh, yeah? When Seasons on the Fly continues, a real live history book, one of Iceland's legends of music, and the hunt for this angler's first career Atlantic salmon, when we come back. Greg Heister here. Find out the truth about chronic Lyme disease. Go to seasonsonthefly.com. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Loop. Join the Loop Army and help take North America by storm. And by Next IT, intelligently guiding people to answers. Hi there. Don't let the Seasons on the Fly experience end when the show does. Go to the brand new seasonsonthefly.com and watch fly tying demonstrations, a few full episodes, and be sure to pick up a hat or season one on DVD and support the show. And remember, we've got a Facebook page. Go there, click like, and stay in touch with us. I really appreciate you supporting the show, and I hope to see you on the river sometime. The Atlantic salmon has been tortured for the past 300 years. Dams and overfishing have hampered populations, and in some cases they are now extinct in certain rivers in the North Atlantic. But the populations on Iceland remain healthy. They've been protected, and on the Laksa, it has been catch and release for many years. Verlander Verlanderson, or Verli, has seen it all on the big Laksa. He's been on the river for better than 60 years. Grandfather was a killie, but he was also a farmer. So he didn't have time to go the whole day, so uh, he sent me with the guys and uh, point out for them uh, the name of the pools and where to start, where to stop, and uh, what to expect. It's believed that this river was first fished with a fly by an Englishman in 1877. Verley is both historic here and a bit of a historian as well. That's a good case of bugs. <laughs> and the flies were very expensive, so, so uh, the farmers, uh, they didn't own many, maybe three, four, five flies. And then they were uh, barring, uh, they yeah, was uh, lending each other and so on, trading. Also, uh, the farmers, they, they were using a bamboo rod, just one piece. 16, 18 foot long. So that was, uh, <laughs> but they were very good. The tradition of the long rod continues today in Iceland. Two-handers are the sticks of choice for many. It's tradition, but it's also function. The first guys to fish this river, fly fish this river, was uh, uh, English guys or Scottish guys. They have a long tradition of the, of the two-handed rods. So I guess it, it came from there. Uh, that this river is a two-handed rod river. I mean, it's been fished by Americans over a number of years, and there's been a lot of fish caught on single-handed rods. But, I mean, finally you have an opportunity to fish a double-handed rod in Iceland, so you might as well use it. For Joe Roop, an angler whose history of chasing fins started with cutthroats in North Idaho, puts his own style into the big stick. Yeah, I'm a so-so spade caster. I mean, it's kind of more like redneck hybrid, what I can do, I can cover water, but it's not, it's not pretty at times. Um, I can get it done once I'm in the groove. The special about this river is not the, exactly the number of fish, but the quality Ooh. of the fish, the size of the fish. Ooh. The river is big enough in spots where a boat is utilized. Even it creaks and squeaks of tradition, but it can be very effective. There. Yes. Mm. The fresh fish though, bro. Yeah. The grills. Oh, nice. Iceland is known for a lot of grills rivers. I mean, you know, fish that stays in the sea just one year, comes back. They're four, five, six pounds. Oh, 
When seasons on the fly continues, the big fish of the laksa show their heads. Net broke, but you got them. <laughs> Where'd it go? A rock and roller talks flies, and it happens when you come back. Don't strike that hard. Hi there. Go to seasonsonthefly.com and support our sponsors. Without them, this show is impossible. Find their logo, click on it, go to their website, and buy their product. Let them know that you learned about them through our show. And thank you for watching Seasons on the Fly. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by the Baja Pirates. Here's your chance to fish the aquarium of the world. And by Buck Knives. That cut pretty much says it all. For a guy who ties classic Atlantic salmon flies and has spent a better part of 20 years searching for the original feathers, like in this green Highlander, a chance to catch the very fish that those flies were invented to fool ranks high in life experiences. Oh, fish! Yo, strip! No! Holy crap! Don't strike him that hard! Jeez, the drag's not set on this thing. Oh my god, really, don't, don't set it that hard, huh? Oh, baby! <laughs> okay, so it's not all about style. Sometimes you just have to let him have it. He's on the reel, gentlemen. <laughs> so you don't set the hook like that, no. huh? <laughs> well, it works. Hey, the steelhead you do, you let him have it. Yeah. When fishing freshwater, there may be no more exciting moment than when the wake appears and a fish is in kill mode. If people do see it, if the fish is big enough and make a big enough wake, people have a tendency of, you know, start lifting the rod a little early. Go, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ooh, another one. But it is exciting. And again, that's, a, that's the second fish. Two fish in the same swing. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> what, to me, what's, Atlantic salmon fishing is all about. It's so, it's visual, you know, you see, Every take we've had here, we've seen them. The fish floating lines and small flies, and the fish will come up and boil or come up and grab the fly. It's, you see every single take you get. Yeah. Fish. One more around here. And see if you can lift it. Got it. Nice! Oh, Klaus, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> ah, look at that fish. My first Atlantic salmon. That is exciting as all get out. Well, there's a tradition here in Iceland. We couldn't do that because it's all catch and release river, but uh, I would have liked Heister to uh, bite the, the fin off, the adipose fin. It's called Mariolax, and uh, normally it's held with a speech, and uh, the salmon presented on a silver plate at the dinner at night, but uh, we can't do that here. Well done. Thanks, Klaus. Wow, did that just <coughs> make my day. I'm my just week. waiting for the hug you promised me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful thing right there. That take was absolutely crazy. Yep. For Joe Roop, the first Atlantic yeah. salmon came many years prior but the thrill is still very electric. They're big fish, so when they trigger and start, you know, swinging around on your pattern, you know, you just want to lose it. Holding tight, continuing working your pattern, and then having that grab, it's just a, it's a tight, you feel a tighten up, and then the, uh, 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 and you just, you just, you just hit them. Once you have them, then you just let them go and then lift the tip of your rod. Oh, it's a good fish. It's a good fish. Fish on. Fish on. There you go, go Joe. Easy, go easy, go easy. And they rip and jump, uh, break water, push things around. But to move. it gets your heart going, it gets it pumping, and it's just, it, it, it kicks those endorphins loose. And I, I mean, it, 
it, it's it's really cool, really cool. The aerial acrobatics of a of an Atlantic salmon is wonderful. This was like a whoop down a little bit. I knew it was a little bit bigger fish. Beautiful fish, fantastic fish. Salmon fishing, as you know, is all about being in the right spot at the right time. And yesterday, the weather was just perfect. Well, we got him. Oh, Net yeah. rope, what you got him? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? <laughs> That'd be good. Thanks, buddy. The odds are against you right now because the summer has been so warm, the weed is building up, you know, it's had a perfect growth, warm water, a lot of sunlight. So when you play a big fish and like that and you, the, the weed piles up on your leader and uh, they shake their head, they just tear the hook out, so. Way to go, Jose. Gentlemen. A yearly visitor to the Laksa, Burpee Morton, a rock and roll star in Iceland. But Lee Wolf said he came here in 1973. He said every one of ten, you can ro roast them up with the dry fly. Yeah. He said it's a heaven for the riffle hits. Huh. Lee Wolf, an icon in the sport, but many who live or lived in fame have swung flies in this water, like Ernest Schweibert and entertainer Bing Crosby. Yeah, Klaus says you're a backup singer for ABBA. Yeah, right. I wanted to know if he would sign my yeah, right. right breast. <laughs> I also got a terrific left hook. <laughs> the Loxa is known for big fish. That's why anglers will travel to the North Atlantic to this island, a chance at topping the 20 pound benchmark. Klaus Freemore has topped that mark on several occasions. He's hoping this swing fools another. He hit me really hard, and it was spectacular. Take came sideways. I met the fly. The fly was coming in that way. Fish came that way, and it was, uh, it was it was a great take. It was one of the best I ever had, basically. We were over on an island, and there's a little hole over there with a with a shoot out of it, and they like to lie there. It's normally a big fish place. Came right out of the hole. Big one. That's okay. Normally fish there is about 20 pounds. And this one yesterday was about the same size. I'll see if I can beach him. But it's difficult to beach him with the weed. It's a good fish. Ah, he's off. Crap. Well, I mean, to me, that was all worth it. Just a take was fine. Uh, landed is fine. Lost it, just doesn't matter. That was a big one. Yeah. How big? Uh, I don't know, they grow really fast when you lose them. <laughs> <laughs> Seasons on the Fly from Iceland continues after this. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by Dry Fly, handcrafted spirits made in the Pacific Northwest, and by Wild Alaska Sport Fishing and Cruises. Come find the real Alaska. <laughs> Iceland, the land of fire and ice. And since the late 1800s, that's been a side attraction for those who pursue fish with a sense of tradition and history. The Black Doctor, the Green Highlander, the Jock Scott, forgotten flies. But here, they are the hinge that opens a door to a time when sport was about honor and etiquette. Geologically, Iceland may be new, but to the anglers of the Laksa, Iceland remains a step back to an older world. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, nice. Okay, Two fish this in one? the same swing. Okay, get, get them up, 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 up with the rod tip. Up with the rod tip. Okay. On the other side of the lava platter. I'm Greg Heister. I'll see you next time on Seasons on the Fly. Oh, yeah. He's gone. Too it's rough on him. Too rough on that. I know. Oh, it's Jack. I ain't Gilly from. <laughs>
in Ireland or whatever. Like, would I like to have that fish back? Oh yeah, yeah. And did I screw the fish up? Oh, probably. I. I don't know why, if the guide had had, you know, a little heavier wire hook on there rather really, than the real fine wire hook, yeah. Okay, Greg Heister, I'm back. They remain the best of buds, really. Ooh. I'll see you next time on Seasons on the Fly. See him? That was him. Oh, look at it. Look at it.